It is indeed Wednesday, my dudes and non-dudes. We're very <laughs> glad to have you here on Book of Dawn IOTH Academy. I'm tormented by Gnomes, your game master and host. Joining me, we have the illustrious Crowen, Leg Day, and Lemon Kiwi. Uh, Crowen, what's up? What's new? How was your trip? Trip was good. I just got back yesterday, catching up all that stuff, but it was a good time. And I'm ready to be back and into the swing of things. Hell yeah. Hell yes. Leg Day, what's going on with you? You weren't uh, you weren't grinding today. You were watching VODs. Yeah, I was doing my research. I don't know if it's a Chromeberg or if it's intentional, but when you started to do the show intro, the creepy music started playing in Roll20, so I don't know if this is a, mm. <laughs> uh, an indication of things to come. Welcome Prophecy to Prophecy is true. Try giving it a, uh, a refresh, because it did the same thing to me when I loaded up. Mm. And now I'm like paranoid listening for the ghost music that I don't want to be playing right now. It happens. Yeah, we, we we gotta maintain the ghost music for when. Oh, I'm I'm just getting constant ghost music. Oh well, I'll just let it run its course. This is your life now. This is my life now. Let me kiwi. How are you? What is up? I was doing great up until Crowen was like rubbing his hands like a little bee because of the <laughs> evil music. What? So. <laughs> it didn't mean anything. What is Absolutely he cooking? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> God, do off, I hear beam music? <laughs> Why do I hear boss music? I don't like that, but uh, yeah, all good. Excellent, excellent. All right. When last we left our heroes, oh, I know. I sigh when I have to think about yeah. heroes. <laughs> <laughs> protagonists main characters viewpoint people uh cast crew donna is an unreliable narrator she's got too much void corruption <laughs> <laughs> when what last we left our uh characters of dubious moral alignment the sunswept lands were on the verge of war thanks to an infernal plot centuries in the making the solar empire of brontha is arming its forces to attack the dragon tribes Bothotlo. Our heroes hope to stop this war because they have determined how their enemies, the Infernals, have been plotting to use this to bring all of those who would resist their power to their knees so they can be swept away. To make matters worse, after a successful raid on the machine city of Defraxis, during which our heroes apparently abducted somebody who nobody now remembers, probably due to the use of dawn magic by their enemy Alexander. Thanks in retaliation to this attack, the Machine City of Defraxis is now arming its troops and preparing to retaliate against Ioth Academy. This means that not only do the Archmages need to try to stop a war between people who should be allies, they also need to look to their own defenses. But... As the power of the Book of Dawn was used to erase this student from everyone's memory, it blew out of control, revealing a flare of light in the far north. The first actual clue that our heroes have had in locating the Book of Dawn and their former friend Alexander. This means, however, that our heroes are not protected by the sphere that Ioth created so long ago when he forged this academy. And that fact has driven them to potential acts of desperation. Finally, Athelor's father has demanded that he return and is threatening to withhold aid or otherwise tilt the scales of power against the Academy if he is not obeyed. With all of these threats coalescing at once, our heroes are caught right in the middle and doing their best to stay afloat. Garnet was walking away with the Book of Seosh to enact a design that she was given by Seosh himself, the master of void magic, the exile, the lonely one. Athelor was in discussions with Untermaler, planning a diplomatic envoy to Andrud in order to mollify his father. And Mason was with the sage interrogating the dragonborn mirror clone Kepesk, who is a pivotal part of the entire scheme to bring these powers against each other in war. Before we proceed with our scene, before our adventure continues, I want to check in with everybody. Does anyone in my party have any questions? And does anybody in the party have anything they need to raise before we truly begin? Have Untermaler and, my, have Untermaler and I collectively discovered the thing I found in Ilth's spire? 
you would have discovered it yourself. And I don't remember the exact timing of that, but I don't think you brought Untermaler on that little expedition. Cool. So I, I think that might be a better place for you to have left off after speaking with Untermaler. You went up to the office to look for things. So why don't we start off with Athelor? After making that discovery, what would his next course of action be? Uh, I suppose it depends on how hard it was. Like, I'd rather be Investigation 20 looking south and finally open this door through a uh, mysterious arcane combination of Ioff's personal rune set and his beloved quill. Mm -hmm. uh, how did the door open, Nobs? The light of the runes sort of flowed like liquid up from the bottom to illuminate the whole thing, and then a single thread of light split the solid metal in half, and it swung soundlessly before you, revealing what we talked about earlier. Which I believe you could probably describe better than me, is uh, something that might be quite important. Mm -hmm. Do we have the map of on the thing? I, I can pull that up. Bear yeah, with me. So let's have a little look at this. Mm -hmm. For the benefit of gamers everywhere. For all of gamer kind. <sighs> Behold. Yes, we find ourselves in a chamber surrounded by four portals, seemingly undisturbed for probably almost a year now, but mm -hmm. it, not dusty. I see Ayal's office. Is that what I'm supposed to be looking at? Uh, well, Garnet can't see any of this at the moment, but if you oh. move Garnet down, you can see what she can't see. Same with Mason. Or, you know, take mm -hmm. a look at the stream. I'll just look at stream. Yeah, look at stream. <laughs> yeah. Beyond the door, a octagonal chamber with an enormous crystal, mostly blue, but with threads of almost blood-like stains upon it, is on top of a metal apparatus that rotates on a dais. Gemstones stud the outer rim of it, a total of eight. And there are four arms that swing out. Each of them holds a sample of one of the four elements. On the opposite side of those walls are gates that lead to the wellsprings themselves, roaring furnaces of elemental fire, swirling vortices of air, the infinite ocean where Lee Bond dwells, and finally, the deepest depths of the earth that were once home to Erakura. A seal upon each of these gates prevents material or creatures from passing through, but the raw energy of those places can be conducted and focused by these apparatus. Complex mechanical contraptions and pipes ring the rest of the room. It is clearly a carefully constructed and calibrated piece of arcane equipment. To which, did you do an Arcana check last time? I forget. No, you sent this to me in DMs afterwards. Okay. So I well, think it's time for an Arcana check. Yeah, absolutely. 17. Okay, given that these gates are, are deliberately sealed off, filtered almost, this is clearly a device for channeling and coalescing elemental energy carefully focusing it and keeping it balanced so that it can be harvested or imbued for the creation of items or storage in different types of vessels. This could be a fuel for powerful works of customized magic, uh, ritual magic, or again, item creation. The amount of energy this thing is theoretically capable of channeling is enormous. Athlor scratches his chin thoughtfully as the quill comes back to his other hand. And I inspect the central crystal. Uh, if I roll investigation for this, perhaps? Mm hmm Go ahead. Oh, didn't go. There we go. A 10. A 10. Actually, it... you know what? I'm going to use one of my lucky dice. Okay, go for it. You and also that, have two raid spirations. Oh, true. Very pog. You know what? I'll use for it raid spiration instead. Mm-hmm. We roll investigation again. This one's worse. <laughs> well, you can still throw a lucky dice at that if you want. And then <laughs> you know what? I think you're out of options. Why not? When I'm, when I'm all in on having a look at this wee crystal, I'll... Uh, slightly better. 16. What, what, what do I get okay. for a 16? All right. You... It's almost familiar, right? It has a lot mm -hmm. of the same waxy 
quality to it that the enormous chunk of Erakura's blood, which now resides in Sig's chest, had. And the pieces of it that are red look like that exact substance. This was Erakura's blood. But the rest of it, this completely different color, this must be something else. It's similar, but it's, it's not blood. Are there four different colors? Not of this central one. Of the outer okay. ones, there's like a little uh, swirling vortex in a bottle, a bowl of water, a stone, and a brazier that still has fire in it. But this central crystal, which is bigger than you are, is just one jagged mass. I reach out and touch for crystal. Okay. A shock runs through your whole body, a vibration that reminds you in some ways of the gyre itself. A different tune, but the same, it would harmonize. It's in the same key, if you will. Also, somewhere at the back of your mind, your stomach gurgles and churns, and there's this brief, savory, meaty smell. And it makes your whole body sort of hang with hunger for a brief, short moment. Yet it's sweeter as well. If the blood of Arakura was like the most raw, bloody steak anyone would had has ever eaten, this is almost like uh, cane sugar or, or, or clear crystal clear spring water. It's some admixture of the two. It's very, very odd. Hmm. Athelor lets the shock run through him for a moment mm -hmm. before coming to terms with that he probably needs someone who's a little bit better versed in world lore than himself for this mm -hmm. and goes for a final experiment. Okay. He sheepishly saunters over to the gate of flame. Can you saunter sheepishly? I don't know, actually. <laughs> it, like, I, I guess part of it's like, yes, and also part of it's like, Okay. I, I think you end I think you end the saunter sheepishly. Got it. Got it. So it's like, like I'm gonna do this and then I shouldn't do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that you can absolutely do. That makes sense. And takes the quill in hand and just gently places the nib against the portal. Okay. It flares up, catching on fire at the tip. <clears throat> he he Pulls it back as quickly as possible. The fire the damaging the quill. The fire is still lit. The tip of the quill is still burning, but <laughs> it doesn't go out, and it's also not spreading. Athlor quickly does a small somatic motion and sees if he can cast fireball from the quill. Okay. Yes. A fireball? Did you just kind of bolt? Oh, <laughs> like, Ariana would be proud. Let me get out of the temple real quick. This is a small like room. Me. Like, why is he so calm about this? <laughs> I would like to blow up the giant focusing crystal, please. There will be no consequences. <laughs> just into like this wall here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Off it goes. Is the fire gone? No. Ooh. Okay. Athlo will ponder this for a while. We can probably leave this scene here. Okay. Mason, after interrogating Kepesk, the sage has departed in search of Untermaler, who recently left Athelor behind. She, as she's making her way through the deep vaults, and about to exit, she will glance, not even over all the way looking over at you, but just glance slightly. We must strike swiftly before they know our advantage to root each and every one of them out and blind their eyes that they may not see. I think you can turn to whatever matters are lie at your own hands for now, Mason. Mason's like kind of distracted trying to process all this information and specifically 
trying to process how to tell it to Sventisco as well. Because it's going to be a big deal to her. And yeah. Yeah. Kind of like standing there just processing, but turns and just nods to the sage as sage departs. And mm -hmm. leaving you standing in front of the teleportation link with the deep wardens on either side in their elite armor, just sort of looking at this kid. They're not going to give you trouble. You were traveling with the sage, but, you know. Yeah. It's a weird world we now live in. I think Mason will pull out the uh, sending stone that's mm -hmm. touches to Ventisco and say, just found out a lot about Kepesk. Need to tell you some of it, all of it. Meet me in my room soon. Single response, okay. No okay. period. No period at the end, though. That's important, right? <laughs> K is bad. K with a period is really bad. Okay with a period is not great. Flat okay uh, is... Uh, uh, Should have been pissed if uh, that was the case. Good thing it's not. No. But yeah, we'll just make some little... Just try to. I think he he's been kind of distracted from like using his own um, kind of like meditative techniques recently with all that's mm -hmm. going on, but is feeling himself being like, okay, this is a lot, and we'll default back to just kind of using some like control water in his flask and just mm -hmm. like kind of calmly swirl it around his hands and just look at his hands for a little bit, but then calm down a little bit and head off to his room, wait for Sventisco. All right. It takes her a little while to get there. When she finally does arrive, you can tell that she is focused. You can tell she was just, there's a certain air that changes when she's with you versus when she's out there trying to lead, trying to rabble rouse and such. And that version of her straight back, straight neck, long straight ponytail, all of that, that's clearly the version of her that you're seeing right now as mm -hmm. she walks into the room. And it doesn't immediately soften. Hey, what's... She just shrugs as if that says everything. Um, I was with the sage, um, and we were going through Mirror Clone Kepesk's memories and found out a lot of things. Are you... Is this an okay time? It's, it's going to be a lot. We don't get to choose right now. Mason kind of half smiles at that, nodding in kind of agreement. Says, okay. Deep breath and... Well, Kepesk has been a Mirkon for a long time, probably ten years or so, and he was placed here in this, in this camp, brought the mirror that targeted um, Alex and... Naomi, that, that whole thing wasn't a mistake at all. It was very intentional. There's a lot of, of mirror clones spread out throughout the camp and throughout, I think, the, the tribes as well. Uh, I think that's what... I, there, there was... Uh, and Brontha. But you, you're oh, pretty yeah. much covering it. Also, uh, this conversation happened like 10 minutes ago for yeah. Mason and a week ago for yeah, Crowen. For <laughs> so you're not expected to remember all the details. We can, we can fill yeah, you in as needed. It fills in all the details, but mm -hmm. there's like the part Mason would try to be like very sensitive about going over the parts with like the basically the war between like the Tholo tribe and Brontha was like kind of like manufactured by this effort mm -hmm. as well, right? So yeah, that's like the important bit. We would get into that and that would be like just trying to get a sense of what's Sventisco's like reaction to that um, before continuing. Okay, give me an Insight check, please. With advantage, because she's your girlfriend for years and years. Nice. Love that. 17. Okay. 17. Okay. There is a direct collision right now between his John Revolutionary, Sentisco, and scared lost daughter whose mom is dead, Sentisco. Just smacking directly into each other. Mm -hmm. She keeps her head up, she keeps her back straight, but she's doing a lot of 
<clears throat> a lot of it's in her throat. A lot of it's in the way that her hands are sort of fiddling with her bron- with her uh, copper jewelry. Mason will go ahead. Yeah, Mason would, would continue upon even just like gaining that and not wanting that to like linger on its own for too long, but in terms of help, would say. But what this does mean is that now that we know this, we can take efforts, and the sage has said we should soon as well, but take efforts to try to dispel this this war um, by brooding out the mirror clones and by letting people know that this is what caused it. It wasn't anything between the two, but a separate force trying to get in the way and trying to kind of please their own goals and it will be difficult but it is possible there's a way to right these wrongs and we have that information now and i think it's possible infernal words may have pointed the bronthans at my family but it was bronthan hands that held mm-hmm. the spears I know. This doesn't erase anything. No. You can be pushed to do something like this. You're still... Oh, Mantra, I have to go. I have to go. I just... Do you know who in the settlement? Mason might have some, some names. Yeah, I mean, if, if Mason did, would say, like, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, Mantra, I have to go. We were just talking about meeting with community leaders to help with preparations for... And she's going to get her things, and she's going to, like, start to leave in a hurry. Uh, I sort of follow her. Mm-hmm. Um, not trying to be, like, subtle about it. Just be like, all right, I'm, okay. I'm coming with you. We can do this. Yeah, that's, that's not a problem together. for her. Yeah. Um, and would say, I know it doesn't erase the wrongs of Brantha, but it could perhaps save more lives. And that's all we can do at this point. Fine. That's, that's good enough for now. I know. Come on. We have to deal with this later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she starts running and she's pretty tall and has a pretty long gait. So she starts (laughs) hauling ass to go catch up with the rest of the kids, John. Uh, who were literally just in the process of reaching out to several different people, community leaders out in the settlement, people who are the locals look up to. Her whole philosophy was that if we want to help people, if Defraxis is going to attack, we need to be prepared to help them, just like when Terranimbus attacked before. But we can't just barge in and start telling them what to do. We need to work with the community leaders who already know their needs, who already know the people on the ground. And some of the people who I just said we need to go talk to are mirror clones, so let's go deal with this. That makes us try to keep up. She's so fast. Just <laughs> hauling it. We stand a short king. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Giving it a go. <laughs> and so the camera sort of holds down the hallway. She hauls out in front, and Mason's doing his best to keep up. <laughs> We then switch back over to Garnet, who just walked out the door from a conversation with her teacher, with her own intentions. Where is she going? Uh, Probably to the usual study room where Elle Mm -hmm. now and her would do a lot of their boy stuff. Okay, down in the crypt. That's where all the notes and all the Mm -hmm. resources are. All right. You make it all the way there, and you've been imbued with this knowledge, how to create your own mask. Part of this came from Seo. She imbued it inside of you. Some of it was drawn up, spun like molten metal into wire from you, your own heart, your own desire, your own vision about this creation. So even if the essence is from Seo, the appearance of specific manifestation is derived from you. Are there any particular materials that Garnet has gathered for this? Aside from sitting down with the book with a whole bunch of notes and stuff and just beginning to focus on the magic part of it. 
Uh, what materials would I think are useful? Oh, uh, it needs to be something oh, uh, that durable. Metal, ceramic, stone, something along those lines. The magic of the mask is going to cause it to multiply into plates that will cover your entire body. And the magic will further fortify and strengthen them so that even if it's porcelain or glass, it will still be strong. Well, definitely is avoiding metal. Mm -hmm. um, it's not too picky on material. Porcelain or, or stone, whatever would be mm -hmm. available and strongest. Okay. You get a few minutes into it. You have this idea of how to take the void, compress and fold it into this physical object, and then face it directly, just like you tried to do with the book, except deliberately with cold, pure willpower, forcing it to obey what you want it to do and turning yourself into a vessel, a conduit, bound by physical material, taking the immaterial into the material. You are in the middle of these thoughts. Roll perception check. Twenty. You hear footsteps down the hall. The footsteps are light, but there's another sound with them. Whoever this is is using a staff or walking stick of some kind. And every time it hits the ground, it is hitting the ground hard. And this person is moving quickly. Can I? So I I'm guessing I recognize the one footsteps. Would I? Could I tell the anything else about it's, the second? It's just one person with a staff. You oh. know those footsteps, but they're moving with purpose. Okay, then I just continue working. Okay. <laughs> Mommy's holding ass. <laughs> the door slams open. And the staff of Ioth hits the ground with a decisive thud. Garnet Tosaka. Just. Is it hasn't turned her head towards her work because she mm -hmm. knows it was her and. Yeah. Look at me. Looks at her. I've been a terrible teacher to you. And I'm done doing that. Close the book and stop what you're doing this instant. Is she being loud? Yes. Okay. Can you close the door? You're being loud. <laughs> oh, she does this is not. not how I imagined of a TPK happening. She does not <laughs> close the door. She walks across the room directly towards you until she's right next to you. She'll just like look at uh, up at her and with like kind of a deadpan face. I'm laughing right now, which is very deadpan. Yeah, for sure. And we'll slowly close the book of Seosh and say. Please close the door. <laughs> she thuds the staff again. And a shimmering curtain of smoky darkness rises up in front of it, of the door, which still does not close. Compromise. And I, I think you've been a great teacher. No. I haven't. And it's my fault. But you know what I just realized? The entire reason all of this has happened is because of Merrick. And Merrick is dead. And that means that the responsibility falls solely to me. And I have been lax, and I have been over permissive and I have allowed you to harm yourself and others and that's inexcusable and it stops now 
She kind of looks down at the book again and starts opening it and just says, um, just because Merrick is dead doesn't mean I'm done. She is going to take her hand and slam, attempt to slam the book closed. She'll let her do it. Okay. With this, yes, you are. Why? Because this is my responsibility. Not yours. Kind of looks up at her and says, then why haven't you killed the machine prince yet? That takes her back a little bit. Uh, roll insight for me, please. Oh, fuck. I don't care. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have no luck dice anyway. <laughs> Because I can't yet, and neither can you. Well, at least I'm trying. She gestures towards the book. Garnet, I forbid you to do this to yourself. You shouldn't have to. It's completely wrong, and I'm done with it. Merrick took everything from me, and I'm not going to let him take you too. As your teacher, as your master, I am responsible, not just for your protection, not just for your life, but for giving you a chance that you deserve. If anybody is going to do this, if anybody is going to hollow themselves out, that falls to me. Not you. I already watched one person I care about die and did so helplessly, and I'm not about to watch it happen to you or Athalor. No. Or anyone. I'm not going to let watch it happen to you. Garnet, you are... So young, you have so much ahead of you, so many possibilities. There are things that you deserve to have that have been taken from you. I've seen centuries. I've had a long and full life. It is the duty of the master. It is the duty of the previous generation to put themselves in front so that those who come after them have a chance, any shot at happiness. And I don't know why you seem to think that it has to fall to you, that you're the one who needs to be torn apart, why you need to carry all of these burdens, but you don't. I am going to do this. What are you going to do? What is, what is your plan? If I have to make a fucking mask, I will make a fucking mask. Then make one with me. Not if you're going to wear it. It's my duty to protect the school and you, and this is it's my, my duty to, to protect make. you, Garnet. I can't let this happened to you you're all that i have left i i love i'm not going to let this happen to you then make a mask and prove it to me roll persuasion or intimidation your choice Twenty-one. She is still showing a sharpness to her. It's not like when a parent is, you know, 
being a hard ass, being a wall, being a bulwark against you. That's not who she is. She is a knife. She is a slender blade that can still cut where it needs to. And she has never drawn that blade against you this way until today. And as you say that, she softens. Roll another insight check for me, please. Oh, we're only good today. She Ooh. is holding back tears. She reaches out gently at first and then forcefully to take the book from you. Oh, oh man. Uh, okay. I think it's time that I help in the mentoring. I'll teach you the ritual, and I'll teach you how to make a mask, but I want a mask if it comes down to needing to use it. If it comes to that, I, I need a mask to protect you. I won't wear it until absolutely necessary. Is Garnet lying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what nose doesn't even know? <laughs> you know, it can uh, it can go either way. Oh. <laughs> You're all bossing too close to the sun. All right, well, I, uh, I have inspiration for this. The inside of the gods. Oh, <laughs> fuck! Sheesh! Where'd she get all that wisdom from? <laughs> she shakes her head, crestfallen, disappointed. And quietly says, I, I know you better than that. You know, I know you better than that. If it comes down to life or death, I'd rather live and have you hate me. Same. And she's going to move to physically remove the book from your possession. She's going to hold on to the book for a second and mm -hmm. say, uh, I'd prefer if we work together on this. She doesn't immediately answer you. Still trying to pull the book away. You've been given the Mask of Silence, which means that you can use your reaction to immediately inflict void damage on a creature that has wronged you. <laughs> should like you that. should you so choose? Are you going to let her pull the book from your grasp? Or are we doing athletics checks or something else? Okay, sorry, I need a second. To That's totally <laughs> fine. Uh, that is completely. Do you want us to go to a different scene for a bit? I think we'll just. I think she'll take a Twilight Tendril and just mm -hmm. take a hold of the staff, but not in a way to pull it. <laughs> and just say, Are we trading then? Because you're leaving me empty handed here. And you can't use both of these, right? Well. The Watch DM me. check. <laughs> oh, Watch <fuck>. me. <laughs> Damn. Dude, Bitch. she watched Super Nanny or something. Okay, if you need to go to a different scene, I need to think about my reaction to that. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. 
I should have warned you you were getting yelled at before this session. I know. I'm sorry. Damn, I thought she was not following me. Okay. She wasn't at first. She sat at her desk and like tore her hair out oh. thinking about it for a moment before she finally mommied up and, and went after you. Mommied up. Oh, okay. Athelor is in Elnau's office moving a bunch of stuff. If an alarm yeah. went off, it is the silent version of it, the mental version of it, and uh, nothing else happened. Yeah, Aside I, from I've seen it happen for Elnau before, so we figured like Maybe the quickest way for me to contact her and tell her about this if I just move mm -hmm. a bunch of shit and someone goes ding ding ding, someone's fucking around up there. <laughs> <laughs> My fuckometer is going off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there's no uh, immediate response. Uh, after he just fucks with a bunch of shit, like he doesn't have an aim in there apart from like alerting L now. So he goes back to the elemental wellspring thing, mm -hmm. and uh, now that he has fire on the end of a quill, he's going to sequentially touch it to each of the other portals to see if it overwrites the energy or adds to it. In what order? Let me, uh, we're going to do I'll it clockwise. Okay, well, let's put you back there so that you can see what it is you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. So he moves from the fire that's already mm -hmm. on the quill over to, I assume this is the earthen portal. Mm -hmm. And I, I suppose it's less of a, less of a, I don't know what a mass of earth just looks like. Just looks like a cross section with a couple of fossils in it or something. <laughs> just donk. It's, it's more just like behind this is churning, rumbling gravel and rock and such. So mm -hmm. when you touch the quill to it, there's almost this dusty cloud that accumulates around it of particulates. Uh-huh. The fire is lessened and the earth cracks and melts and glows red hot they have in fact merged ah oh, okay so it's kind of lava-esque now mm-hmm Athlor excitedly like and then runs over to the water it extinguishes the fire leaving only the earth And then next to the gate to the to the air. The wind gathers around, blows away the cloud of dust that's accumulated around the tip of the quill, leaving it completely empty. Interesting. And then lastly, Athalor moves back over to the crystal. Mm -hmm. And taps the quill to one of the particularly red spots to see if it reacts at all. Hmm. Okay. Actually, beforehand, he goes to the earthen bit, mm -hmm. refills the earth, and then touches the mm -hmm. bloody spot. Okay. Okay. Following even, the Ericurin thread. Even though the crystal, like the blood, if this is the blood of Ericura, it is solidified, it's almost like the cloud of earth sort of sops it up a little bit. And now whatever is gathered around the tip of this quill is this thick, unctuous blood. Uh, one moment, please. <laughs> what does it smell like? <laughs> Delicious. God, you're hungry. It's like you haven't eaten in, in ages. That is an 18. I do 18. not eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I do not eat it. Not yet. All right. Uh, just hold on. Don't mind me at all. Okay. That's all that happens. It's incredibly delicious. Okay. Uh, so there's like the coagulated blood kind of around mm -hmm. the tip. Interesting. Uh, Law check. Mm -hmm. I'm going to roll intelligence for Athelor. Uh, if this is good, could you give me what I would presumably know about Ramius? Sure. You could also do a religion check. 
which may be identical given your character sheet. Yeah, they're, they're the same. All right. Uh, Ramius. So, what guy? Uh, with the Titans, right? All the Titans are either the combination of two sovereigns or the sole spawn of a single Titan. There are no sovereign. There are no Titans from sovereigns with opposing elements. There's no sovereign. The Liban and Sin didn't create any Titans together. Uh, but Zalar is from Vindur and Sin, fire and air. But again, every single sovereign has one Titan that is solely theirs. Ramius is the sole offspring of Erakura, was said to be the cupbearer of the gods, who dipped a silver ladle into the wells of blood to pour life into the veins of all newborn creatures. Hmm. I have to think about this. <laughs> There's lots more in the library. I'm like, you're in one of the best libraries in the entire world. So you could definitely go do some research. It'll just take you some time. True. Though, Athelor does know something about what's in here. Mm -hmm. And with this potential life-bearing substance on the quill, mm -hmm. it moves over to see if a door to the golem chamber is unlocked. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Did I dorify that? No, I don't think I dorified that one yet. So let me uh, do this the old-fashioned way. Whoop. There it is. Still in a state of disassemblement. All right. Uh, so the head's still here, right? Mm-hmm. Athelor uh, hesitates for a long moment mm -hmm. as he contemplates if this is a good idea, a bad idea, or just a stupid idea. It is one of the ideas of all time. <laughs> it is certainly an idea. <laughs> and almost goes to draw on the forehead of a golem, but instead decides to go for a test run and etches a quick seemingly blood fueled, I assume, rune onto the hand here to see if the construct reacts at all. What rune or runes are you drawing? Uh, in Ioth's language, mm -hmm. life. Okay. You scribe it on. A few moments pass. And then the runes sort of start to seep into the hand like absorbed in and vanishing and there's a grinding as the fingers twitch is there anything left in the quill no Athol steps back and observes just hoping that eventually Elna is going to come from him messing about with shit on her desk. Uh, <laughs> let's if she see comes it. back. I was going to see, let's see if she ever comes back at all. God, it's going to come up with the book of the stuff like, sub bitch, I got an alarm. <laughs> look, at, look at me. I am the Archmage now. <laughs> Guess you got promoted. <laughs> it's Garnet Academy now. <laughs> uh, tell Academy, rise up. <laughs> Do you know what's happening down there and whether uh, Elna is alive yet or do you need more time, Garnet? Because we can always go to Crowan. Yeah, I need a few more minutes if Crowan has anything. All right, do. trying to decide whether or not to frag your, your uh, no, no, <laughs> mother that's figure. Not, that's not the consideration. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, I'm just saying, there are no, there are no bad ideas. <laughs> that's true. Mm. Only bad people who enact them. <laughs> Ideas are cheap. Execution is everything. Or, with the right nuclear magic, every one. Uh, all right. Mason, you are Yo. running with Sventisco. Yeah, behind, you know, trying to catch up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same thing. When you get to where she is heading, the Kizjan 
are in the process. They've got lit, like a map of the refugee settlement drawn up and it's marked off with different areas. Like we're going to talk to these folks. We think that mostly this is uh, a Bronthan enclave. These areas are from people who have fled from the sunswept lands. A lot of dune riders here. What do we know about them? What's the best way to approach them? Uh, they've been doing some, like they don't know the names of everyone they're going to talk to, but they've tried to do as much research as they can. And you, you're no stranger to this. You would have been involved in, in a lot of this process. So you're aware mm -hmm. of what's going on. There's okay. also a few uh, fairies flitting about from the court of reverie, AKA <laughs> as this is a joint operation, you can tell that there's a, not so much tension as much as uh, noise and chaos because, uh, Falcom doesn't do anything quietly or subtly, mm. but there, this is a joint operation as they're working together. They're comparing notes, uh, preparing gifts. So like, okay, what, what do we make for Dune Riders? Any Dune Riders here? Do you know like what the proper etiquette is? And Santisco is going to walk in uh, and look at everything and then look at you and then look at the map. It's as if she was about to walk in and just say, everyone stop, but she didn't. Because now she's just looking at the map and thinking. She have the mess. She's got to have the message cantrip. She's all about being sneaky. Surely, surely she has it. I don't. Okay, yeah, she oh, does. She's cool. really good at whispering. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna ping you with a whisper, with a message cantrip, and mutter under her breath. We don't know. Oh, we were just going to go meet people. I don't know if I want to... Do you know what the teachers are doing yet? Not yet. The plan is to act relatively swiftly, but I don't know any more than that. Also, I have a question about, mm -hmm. um, in the past with Kizjon dealing something at the refugee camp, have we ever dealt specifically with any of the people now confirmed to be mirror clones and have the mirror clones like helped, uh, like done things that actually like helped the Kizjon in their, in their kind of yes. like, deals, their process? Yes and yes. It's a very, very recent thing that the Kizjon has been doing this like humanitarian. I want to always want to say humanitarian, but it's not all humans. So that always trips yeah. me up. But okay. these these sorts of missions, they're a very, very new thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, they have some of the people who are on that list are people they interacted with. And they were being extremely helpful and supportive to their communities. Relief aid. Thank you, chat. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and you can respond to our messages. So you can have a two-way private conversation. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> I think... Yeah, maybe I had this conversation earlier, but oh well. She wasn't cool. doing a lot of thinking. She was doing yeah. a lot of acting. <laughs> That's fair. The mantra just lets her cook, just lets her go. Um, we'll say we might not want to avoid them really obviously. Otherwise, they might know that we know something is up. They are not going to directly interfere with our efforts, so it might just be better to proceed as normal for now, otherwise it looks weird. I don't know, though it's tricky. Maybe that now that they know that Kespek's, Kepesk is gone, they might just be on alert. I don't really know the right answer here. I can't. Well, I have to tell everyone something. The last time I yeah. didn't tell everyone something, it. I have to... No, I know. Yeah. Okay, I have an idea. Okay. I trust you. And she'll go ahead and give everyone, she does a whistle to get everyone's attention and we'll say, we've just found out, some, something to this effect, right? She's going to say, we just found out there are enemy agents inside the refugee camp. We do not know who all of them are. We're not going to do a list of names right now. They should be cooperating and trying to blend in. So just watch your backs. Do not go anywhere alone. B 
be courteous to everybody, but suspicious at all times. And just go into this with eyes open. Uh, she's not going to go ahead and give away the list of names because she, not everyone in the Kiz John and in Fakum are good actors. So if they happen to run into those people, she doesn't know if they're going to keep it together. But she's yep. going to tell everyone that there are mirror clone agents at work. Proceed as normal. Don't do anything weird. Mm-hmm. We'll deal with it later. Oh, that's, that's, her, uh, that's her compromise to avoid keeping secrets and, and uh, causing division, but also keep everybody warned. This probably sets off a whole bunch of conversation, a whole bunch of questions, and it's going to take her like the rest of the evening to just deal with the, the fallout effectively. Yeah, I think Mantra would try his best to help her deal with that fault mm-hmm. as well and okay. not say too much, but try to answer the questions that he can, mm-hmm. kind of put the kids on minds at ease as well as he can. Okay. All right. I think some of the... Uh, give me an insight check, please. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Insight. Yeah, nine. That's fine. We'll just let it... We'll let okay. that be. Lots going on. I, 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 I'm going to say for the time being that the kids, John, some of them are upset or worried, but they also kind of know this comes with the territory. So yeah. they're just going to proceed as is. But everyone's kind of on edge at this point. Better on edge than walking into a trap. Yeah, for but sure. that That is going to take a significant amount of time, which brings us back to Apple. Or are you just waiting for L now? Uh, I've been watching this hand to see if it, uh, if it, if anything goes further. Nope. There are no additional signs of movement on it. Okay. So the rune dissipated. It moved a tiny bit and mm-hmm. for like five minutes, nothing. Right. Okay. Curious. Roll an arcana check. Let's arcane this boy. My cane. A dirty 20. <laughs> so, a construct like a golem, it is almost most of them are animated by binding an elemental to the construct that provides the animating force and the the source of power because elementals are almost self-sustaining they don't need an external fuel source therefore by putting them into the golem and binding it to your will the golem is animated constructs that don't have a bound elemental require some other power source and the Bigger and more powerful the construct, the more power is required. Sig, for example, is now powered by an enormous chunk of the flesh of Arakura. What is likely here is that what you just infused here did not have enough power to sustain animation. It was like Like a a little bit bit of fuel. Yeah, it was like a, a little bit of fuel or a little electric jolt. But it also, remember that a construct is a physical, like any magic item, it is a physical spell matrix. A spell matrix is when you you construct it partially with your constructs in your own mind, with gestures, with physical components and stuff, but then it it dissipates. It triggers the desired effect and the energy dissipates. A magic item or construct needs to be permanent, meaning that instead of using some sort of esoteric gestures and such, the spell matrix needs to be hard-coded into the structure. This golem likely is not a complete spell matrix unless it's assembled because much like circuitry running through it or structural integrity, the animating spell, it leaks fuel unless it's put together and has a proper power source. So what you just did, again, it was like putting a little bit of electricity to it, which is impressive as is because I think I said this thing's made of mithril, right? Seemingly. Yeah, I believe uh, I said it was Mithril. Athos had a little bit of a Jimmy Neutron brain blast. Uh oh. <laughs> and he sprints back into the elemental wellspring room. And he once again does the same routine of going over to the earth, mm-hmm. coating the quill in the roiling gravel and dirt, and then once again tapping it to the bloodied portion of the central. Mm-hmm. And then he runs over, thinking about what happened on the night of the nightmares. And he draws a rune on the Iothian statue that simply says, speak. Oh. Barks. <laughs> 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 I, 
can't. I mean, if it looks like a statue, it box like a dog. <laughs> okay, we're going into the notes here. We're going into the files. Um, because I could contact Gelgeis through mm -hmm. her statue. Right. So to clarify, this one here is the statue of Doakai. This uh, which, is whichever one's I. The Ioth is here. The classic robe and wizard hat. The statue speaks in the Alfar tongue. Preserve what can be preserved. Redeem what can be redeemed. Mourn what must be lost. No more. I run back and do it again. Mm -hmm. Why do you bother me? Why do you trouble me? I have great works to tend to. We could use your guidance regarding your book. The book? That is mine and mine alone. Well, thanks to some security flaws, it's now in the hands of the Infernals. The whole room shudders. Like the stones themselves shudder. How was this allowed to happen? This, this is a catastrophe. This is a disaster. They'll ruin everything. They'll do it again. You... When you fell... Athol pauses for a moment to see what? how the room reacts. You chose to... live in the book rather than see it destroyed. An enemy agent edited the book when the academy was attacked. They left you with a choice. See the book crumble or live out your days within your unfinished project. You chose the book. Mourn what must be lost. No more. Not Luminous. Not again. If they have my book, then all is lost. Flee. Find some other place. Hide yourself away that they do not see you. Employ whatever magic you must. Did you build the sphere before you built the academy? They are one. Yes, the sphere is the canvas upon which I painted this institute of learning. So were you not officially the Archmage when it was completed? I have always been the Archmage. Your heirs are having problems. The sphere was damaged for what I'm assuming... I'm talking to a past you, the future you. The sphere was damaged by the Sovereign of the Skies. And it needs repairing. But with future you missing, we're yet to have a new Archmage. Is there, is there a, a, a ritual to crown a newer Archmage early? A ritual? No. No. Uh the only thing I can think of that would change it would be the book itself to, to, to rewrite the rules, change the fundamental order. Oh, that's bad. It, it, it might be possible with some other 
source of power, a different pocket of dawn magic and the staff, or or a sizable jolt from the blood of Arakura, or uh, the will of a titan, but I wouldn't want any of them getting their hands on this. It, they can't be trusted in these matters. This is mine. This is ours, not theirs. That kind of power source could change the Archmage title early, fuel a, I don't know what you'd call it, apart from a ritual, a traditional handover uh, or something? Uh, there'd be nothing traditional about it, but it, with the staff, it could be possible to assert control early. I can't promise it won't be messy. Messing with what I've set up well in advance with very good reasons, but it is theoretically possible. Well, let's say that future you does not maintain your code as well. By whose standards? You mourned what couldn't be mourned. You tried to recreate Luminius. I am no longer willing to lose when so much has already been taken. Is the Ioth I'm talking to responsible for the elemental gates here in Vespire? What are you doing in my workshop? You don't look like you're a, a mage. What are those, fifth-year robes? You have no business. Archmage? Silence. Athel, Athel goes to see if he can find more goo. <laughs> <laughs> you do notice every time you do this, it's withdrawing just a little. More and more of the crystal mm. goes to that transparent blue, almost shimmering white. Almost minuscule. Just little bits of scraping away that blood. Okay. One, 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 last, one last speech run. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Athol's going to keep it there mm -hmm. with the goo ready, and he's just going to wait. He, he assumes the sage or someone is going to eventually turn up, and he's like, look what I've discovered. I need to find out what this crystal is, but someone else needs to be here or they won't believe me, and I'll be in trouble for using so much of his blood. <laughs> Garnet, how are we, how are we feeling? Good, yeah. Pretty feeling good? Well. Meanwhile, deep beneath Tarsamore House, just a few passageways from the door that once led to his vault, a twilight tendril wraps around the very staff of Ioth as the current Archmage, the Archmage-in-waiting, places her hand upon the Book of Seosh to take it from her star pupil. She seems willing to do whatever it takes, and if that means wearing a void mask and wielding the staff of Ioth at the same time, He'll do it. Garnet, how do you respond? Uh, DM check. Is that, at, based on my void knowledge, can she actually use the staff and mask at the same time? Because don't those magics kind of mm -hmm. cross and hate each other? Um, You know, in order to pull that off, you'd have to be a really skilled shadow mage. That's what she is. That's right. what she is. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, Garnet's very confused in the moment because she sees like all these emotions coming out of El now and the tears, and she feels like she should be feeling that too, and is mm -hmm. kind of not feeling much from the situation, is rather not even frustrated. She's just delayed right now. Interrupted, yeah. And she doesn't let go of the book and will. Through all the fr like mixed energy she's getting, she'll kind of just blurt out stop and void speech um, with the fear effect intended. Mm -hmm. Stop with intention of scaring the crap out of you. <laughs> yeah. With a booming voice, we'll tell her to that stop. Is a wisdom saving throw. All right, let's look at. Let's look at her real quick and just see if there's anything that she has that would apply here. 
Nope. It's a pass? That's a 14. That's a failure. Okay. She freezes. Then the book counts as equipment, right? Depending on, well, if you're going to like Missy step away, then yes. No, something cooler. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, well, probably. I'm going to say probably, depending on the specifics. Okay. Probably. Well, in the shadow form, it says the equipment melds into my form. Mm -hmm. I'd like to either my whole body, if it has to be rules is written, or just my arm that's holding the book. I want the book mm -hmm. to meld into it so she can't take it anymore. And we'll mm. look at her as she froze or kind of steps back, whatever, and we'll just say, we can work together on this, or you're going to have to strike me to take this from me. Mm. Are you going to hurt me, El, now? She had a new save at the end of each round? Yeah. Uh, I believe so, yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not scared of you, little girl. <laughs> I am the shadow. Mm. Mm. No. I, I can't hurt you. I'm sorry this is an act of disobedience towards you after everything you've done, but I wish you could understand that this is bigger than us, it's bigger than me, and I'm just doing this to help you. And she'll kind of like think for a second, but because of void corruption, we'll probably end up just this being unfiltered. Mm -hmm. Because I think otherwise she wouldn't say this, but she'll say, um, cause if I trusted you could do it, I would have let you. Damn. Hmm. She doesn't oh, mean it in like a, a I know, I like know. She, it's like a super like truthful thing. Like she's mm -hmm. saying the truth, but not with the attention of hurting. It's like, you yeah, know, if you the, could do it, you would have done it by now. You know? the, the problem is that of all the people that you could say something like that to in that way, she is one of the only ones who understands why you said it and how much of you is gone for you to have just said it that way. That almost hurts more than the vote of no confidence. So I don't know if Garn is capable of picking that up right now. So can you please help me be the mage you wanted me to be? The mage I wanted you to be is Happy. Happy doesn't save lives, El Now. Then yours should go in the fire last. What she mean by that? Is she saying I should die too? No, you should go oh. last. Oh. Like the order okay. of operations here should be that if anyone's going to get be unhappy, it starts with her and it ends with you when all else is lost. After everything I've done, I'm the one who should pay the price first. Not good people like you. She waves a hand almost dismissively. One day you're going to realize 
that your actions and your wrongs are not the only ones in the world. And it's my job to make sure you live long enough to figure that out. I will work with you. But only if you swear to me. You swear. And her eyes... She frowns, thinking. What oath could possibly bind fucking Garnet? <laughs> what oath could possibly mean enough to her? That. I'm like, going to have to talk to my legal team about this one. <laughs> like she can't ask you to swear it by Zalar. She, if she asks you to swear by Sayo, you'll just fucking do it anyways because whatever. She's my homie. Exactly. Swear by her. I mean, she, she should still understand that El now matters a lot, mm -hmm. but she's got shit to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Ah. <laughs> swear to me that you will not. On that mask, unless I'm dead. Well, ideally, I'd like to use the mask to prevent that. If that happens, you're gone. And everything I, none, none of what I did mattered. I won't be gone. You don't understand. You don't know that. You might still be walking around here, but I will lose you, and Athlor will lose you. You'll be, you'll, you'll be someone else. You'll just be your magic. And that's not all who you are. Promise me, Garnet. I'll teach you everything. I won't hold anything back. Just please promise me, swear to me, that that mask will not touch your face unless I am dead. I'll make sure I go before you do. I can't let that happen. You're the. He bites her tongue. You are all the family I have left. You are all the love that I have left to me. East. And you and Athalor are that to me. This is why I'm doing this. Why is this so difficult for you people to understand? What, how much does this cost me? You think I want to do this? You, this is all Alex's fault anyway. Why don't you try stopping him instead of always getting in my way? And she's like starting to get, not frustrated, but it's, okay, that sounds frustrated, but it's more just mm -hmm. now pulling back the book. Mm-hmm. Is that the price? Is that what it's going to cost to keep you from emptying yourself out and becoming nothing? Until the machine prints and Alex are dead, I'm not stopping. I won't be done. Fine. Let's kill him. will unshadow her arm or body mm -hmm. and turn to the book and continue mask melding. <laughs> <laughs> Good talk. You may now leave. 
Elnel walks over to you, clearly with purpose of some kind, and then stops in her tracks as if hearing a distant noise. Wears, again, very, very the naughty words in the Aurai tongue. And then, damn it, not right now. Oops. What? She cast a sending spell real quick. All right. Show me what you're working on. What did you, what's going on? Alarm in my office. Untramaller will deal with it. Who is in the office? I don't know. Well, can you go get the sphere? I want to, I think I have an idea. Great. Just one moment. And she, with incredible speed, reaches past you, right for the book. Not to take it. To slam her hand palm down on the open page. Just looks at looks at her in a slight frustrated but inquisitive. Okay. She is not there right now. Please leave huh? a message. As she does exactly what you did not too long ago when you reached out to and contacted Seosh. You bitch. What? <laughs> she really just picked up a Skype call while you were talking to her. Uh-huh. And, uh... No, I said sell. Sell. <laughs> <laughs> Please, and, uh, this is very important. And we'll see what's going on with that when we return to Book of Dawn, I have the Academy. Don't go anywhere, folks. <laughs>